What's up, Sickle Cell Warriors? It's Dr. O, and the grind never stops. And today I have a physician here named Dr. Kateria who has an interesting story about treating patients with sickle cell. Uh, Dr. Kateria, can you please speak to the audience about who you are and what you do and give us a little brief description of your life story? Surely. So, well, I mean, uh, as you've introduced me, I'm a doctor. I mean, I'm a medical doctor by training. And then subsequently, I did my management on top of that. And so, and I joined the corporate world. So I've always been in the field, in the corporate world ever since my I finished my med school, and I worked in the healthcare communication. I worked for big pharma uh, called Bayer Pharmaceuticals, and then subsequently I started on my own. I started my healthcare communication company. And in recent years, in say past five six years, my interest has been a lot in digital health because I saw the the entire cascade of technology. Uh, changing and uh, bringing forth a new wave of uh, uh, in, a new wave of change in patient management as well as at the level of patient how they 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 use information how they digest information and then obviously incorporate that in the lifestyle so that's when we started thinking okay digital health is the way to go forward and I started authoring papers I write extensively on digital health I review as well uh, with leading journals for digital health, artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc. And obviously, we started working in in sickle cell um, somewhere in 2018 end. And 2019 was entirely spent in doing background research in sickle cell, uh, talking to all the sickle cell clinicians, experts, policy makers, administrators. So that was the background research we did. And then finally, uh, we set forth, okay, what needs to be done when, when if we have to create a digital health program in sickle cell? Uh, what needs to be done? What are the gaps? So uh, we uh, we went through a long, extensive research process because obviously you can't just jump into sickle cell disease per se. I mean, you can, you can jump in, okay, this is what you, you're creating. So we did extensive research, spoke to plenty of patients as well, understood what, what they went through. I mean, again, um, when I was training as a medical doctor, um, obviously, we did see some patients, but obviously, there, there's been a significant amount of time span when I finished my my med school versus the entire corporate career came in between. So I had forgotten a lot of things. So obviously, I had to revisit, and then uh, we came up with the entire framework of, framework of the digital health program, mm -hmm. and that's how we are. I mean, that's what we are at this point. Awesome, man! And so I'm so glad that I get to speak to you because. Something that's very interesting is, you know, I grew up in sickle cell with sickle cell in America, and there's a lot, there's, and you learn a lot about patients with sickle cell in India. And so I'm just so curious to learn about the state of sickle cell disease in a whole nother country and um, kind of, you know, compare and learn different experiences. So for people in India, what is it like uh, with those who have sickle cell disease? Can you? kind of give some stories or some stigmas about what sickle cell disease is like? Oh, yes. So, so obviously, my entire research was, uh, obviously, the, the starting point was India. Um, I, I went and met plenty of clinicians, uh, plenty of patients as well. So sickle cell, obviously, uh, when I started uh, way back in 18, 19, when I was doing background research, obviously, I came through plenty of sad stories. I mean, uh, doctors would tell me, the stigma, the ostracization, stigmatization, marginalization of sickle cell patients in the society. They are treated as untouchables. You know, I mean, uh, as you know, India has a legacy of caste system and whereby uh, people who belong to lower caste were considered as untouchables. At, I mean, century one, one century back. Now, but I, I was, I was pained, deeply pained to, to learn that uh, particularly in the rural areas, the countryside, you would say it in the U.S., the countryside, um, uh, the sickle cell patients are actually considered to be, to be you know, uh, to be a kind of outcast. They are marginalized. They are living at the fringes of society. And that is the reason uh, once the I mean, government also undertakes plenty of screening program. So if somebody is identified as a sickle cell carrier or a sickle cell patient, um, they are actually the people tend to, to shove it under the carpet and they keep the diagnosis secret because if they if others come to know, they'll be pushed into the into the periphery further. So that's one sad aspect what I learned. Um, but obviously, there has been plenty of development in recent years. Last year, Government of India 
identified sickle cell as one key area and that's and the so government of india is actually for, uh, allocating plenty of resources and obviously it just just to give you the background in the us for example you have 50 states likewise india also has a lot of states so not all the states of india have sickle cell patients they are primarily found in five or six mainly major major proportion of sickle cell patients are in the central part of india so there is state of madhya pradesh chhattisgarh where i belong to um there is rajasthan gujarat Mara, uh, maharashtra bits of maharashtra or as a bit of Jharkhand. These are the major states where sickle cell patients are found. Um, and government of India has come up with an extensive screening program, um, whereby there'll be extensive screening of the patients, there'll be identification of sickle cell patients, a sickle cell trait. Uh, let me tell you one more thing. Sickle, uh, sickle cell trait is not benign. Um, I've come across many patients in India who have sickle cell trait, but they undergo blood transfusions, they undergo frequent pain, uh, uh, pain episodes, they, uh, they undergo ulcerations. So uh, there are plenty of complications. Uh, there are some patients who have undergone uh, AVN as well. So uh, the, uh, let, let, let me clarify here at this platform that sickle cell trait is not benign. Generally, yeah. said that, you know, it's benign, but no, it's not. Well, yeah, that's very interesting that you said that because I don't have the trait, so I can't speak too much towards about that. But I've heard um, stories of uh, athletes with sickle cell trait who have had trouble with breathing, or having their own milder forms of crises, which is interesting because that's not sp spoken about enough, but I have heard of those. Uh, you know, one thing I also wanted to ask you about, uh, Dr. Kateria, is, you know, so you, you said that people in India with sickle cell disease are marginalized. Right. Um, that is very unfortunate, and uh, I've heard in other in places of immigration that uh, it's kind of the same thing, like in Haiti, and, and some of the Caribbean islands, like if you have sickle cell disease, people are scared to speak about it. People don't want to talk about it. Um, and they say you quote unquote have demons. And so they don't like people are don't even, some people don't even know they have sickle cell disease. Some people will go through a sickle cell attack and people think that you're, that there's demons on you. So I guess what I wanted to ask you about is when people, when you say people in India are marginalized, what does that look like? How are they marginalized? Like. How are they isolated? What does that look like? Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of stigma. So, so, for example, particularly women, for that matter, if they are diagnosed, they keep the diagnosis secret. And uh, when they get married, uh, when they get married, then obviously during the course of pregnancy or during the, the process of conceiving or when they're hospitalized, the disease is identified. And when the family comes to know, the in-laws come to know, that that's when the mental harassment comes into play. And then, you know, I mean, again, my discussions with different clinicians, um, they, they identified, I mean, obviously, this, is, this has to be verified, but this is the approximate ballpark number, whereby they said 2 to 3% of uh, the suicides uh, in, in, su suicides are from sickle, are because of the sickle cell disease, and which actually went up during the lockdown period. The mental harassment, the, uh, the physical assault, all these episodes actually went up by three, four, uh, three, three, four times uh, uh, during the lockdown period because people were living in close confines, all the frustration penting up and then diagnosis coming out. Um, so obviously, then the rate of suicide also went up. This is again, not published evidence. This is again from my conversation with the, with the sickle cell clinicians. Mm -hmm. So uh, and also marginalization, for example, in village, if they're living in village, they are hesitant actually to, uh, to come out as sickle cell patient. So obviously, there's a lot of stigma and there are a lot of misconception actually because the community doesn't know. People yeah. think that it it, uh, it spreads through touch, right? I mean, it does not spread through touch. Wow. Uh, so um, there are a lot of in the community and more so one, one more thing I would tell you. In India, as as, as you, you've identified the problems faced in Caribbeans uh, in Africa, similar issues exist in India as well. Um, there are a lot of snake oil therapies. Wow. Uh, and because as I told you, we have an extensive digital health program. We have My Sickle Care app. We have voice messaging program because 30% of the patients in India don't have smartphone. So we said, okay, fine, let's let's create a separate program for them. So we have SMS program, we have voice messaging program for them. We've also created a WhatsApp group for the patients where there are doctors in the WhatsApp group guiding the patients real time. Okay, somebody's saying, okay, I'm experiencing pain. So we would say, okay, fine, you take this. In the meanwhile, if it exacerbates, go to a, go to a, go to the emergency because obviously uh, the sickle cell treatment is free in the government centers. 
So we guide them. But at the same time, we have to encounter plenty of misconceptions. Uh, there are a lot of snake oil therapies. They would say XYZ is treating. Uh, there is herbal therapy. There is some concoction which cures sickle cell disease 100%. And we would, we would try and explain, look, this is a genetic disease. Uh, there's no cure. You have to live with it. Obviously, with good lifestyle management, with hydroxyurea treatment adherence, with folic acid, etc., you can live very well. But obviously, patients don't don't agree to you. They would argue with you. They would depend on some some quack, take some medicine which is actually not not medicine per se, and then you know get robbed and you know they get cheated as well. So there are a lot of sad stories actually I come across every day. So wow, that is very interesting to say. I mean, you said a lot there that um you know I want to unpack. One thing that you said is that in in particular, women are very scared to, uh talk about sickle cell and that's very interesting I, I i get it because i feel like if i'm a woman and i'm trying to get married i guess i don't want to quote unquote decrease my social stigma by telling people i have sickle cell disease but then that kind of creates an even more of a problem because if you're not telling people that you have sickle cell disease then you have an even higher chance of creating an offspring with sickle cell disease which seems to be why in uh, in india there's such a huge like um and endemic of people with sickle cell disease. Um, something that's interesting about my channel, because um, I was looking at my stats yesterday, but 13% of the people who follow me or watch my videos are from India. And I, that wasn't even the intention. I was not expecting that. I was expecting a lot of American followers, but a lot of people from India really watch my channel and try to, you know, collaborate with me, interact with me, which is very interesting. And, um, you know, I'm grateful for that viewing, but it's, it's, it's very interesting. And so... Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to hear all the different perspectives and the different types of problems that that people with sickle cell go through in India. And it's unfortunate that the snakes, snake oil people who are, are pretty much lying and BSing people about sickle cell. I don't really understand the intentions about that, but I, I, it's 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 definitely sad to to hear about our uh, Dr. Kateria. You know, one thing that I I wanted to talk to you about as well is um. You know, you're you're an entrepreneur versus a, and a doctor, so that makes you a doctorpreneur, and that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. You're you're a doctorpreneur, and I noticed you know you 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 have a lot going on, and I think that's really awesome. I'm always appreciative of people who not only talk the talk, but walk the walk and actually do it. So one thing that you're doing that is actually very cool is a cool version of patient advocacy. Is you created this. Uh, app called I believe it's called Sickle Care, right? And in that app, it's really uh, it seems like it's providing a lot of value. So I wanted to ask you about it and pretty much have you talk more about what the app does and how can it help people with sickle cell? How can it actually help people who are watching this show? Right. So what we have is obviously my Sickle Care app. It's Android only because. When we were doing the background research, we figured out that almost 99% of the patients that point in time, we started in 2018, mind you, because there was, we lost two years, precious years in, in pandemic. So we started work in 18, 19, and then, you know, the, we were ready with, with the entire sketch of app, but obviously the plans got delayed because of the, of the pandemic. Uh, but however, uh, so we created this MySQL Care app, and this is purely Android at this point in time, because 98% of, of the patients, for example, this is again a global app, and uh, Looking at the patients in, say, India, Africa, and other parts of the world, we said, okay, Android is a choice. We can go for iOS much later. So uh, the app actually has everything. It's a complete, complete sickle cell management app for the patients. It's free for the patients, and it's, it's going to be free always because I'm a, I'm a clinician at heart first, entrepreneur later. So there's no profit-making motive from the patient, actually. So it, what it does is, obviously, it has uh, a daily water intake record which is most important for the patients because they have to consume water as much as possible. They have to consume 340 liters of water every day. So what we've done is we've created a water record. Uh, temperature is most important because the temperature fluctuates. So at a moment anybody uh, anybody logs onto the to the app and uh, so the home screen flashes the, the temperature of that that particular area and the wind speed and the humidity because obviously patient patients need to know what is the temperature because they need to take care of, they need to avoid exposure. To the to the extremes of the weather it, it, it shouldn't be too hot it shouldn't be too cold if they have to cover themselves properly if it's cold and they have to take appropriate precautions if they have to if it's too hot so we be at the outset we have taken the patient's perspective so there is temperature wherever they are worldwide it will give you the temperature wind speed 
humidity. Then there is water intake record. At the same time, there is sleep record. You can create your mood, mood charting. Then there is drug reminder. They can actually put forth what is the dosage of hydroxyurea. It's already fed in there. Folic acid is already there. They have to just select. Uh, for uh, hydroxyurea dosages are all there. They, they have to just select the dose, select the 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 uh, do dosage timing, twice, thrice, whatever, or 250 NG, 500 NG, whatever dosage has been prescribed. They can just set for the reminder because uh, we figured out compliance is a big issue. The patients take hydroxyurea, they take for one month, two months, then obviously they forget. If they are traveling or if they are they are doing school or college, they tend to forget. So we've created yeah. a reminder. Yeah. So they can put for their hospitalization record. Yeah, they can, I, yeah, yeah. They can put forth their hospitalization record, blood transfusion records. Uh, besides that, there's complete education. Yeah, for women, there's a menstrual charting record. There's pain, pain. I mean, obviously, pain is the most important thing, which I, which I'm coming to much later. So pain, obviously, they can they can keep, keep extensive record of the pain, which body part, what is what is the the intensity, Wong Becker scale, they can rate the pain. Uh, what was what was the pain type? What triggered the pain? What was the relief measure they undertook, which gave them relief? So we have, so even for pain, there's, there's a complete extensive recording we put forth and they can actually share with the doctor. And also at the click of the button, the entire BDF, their fever, fever, bad fever, infection, whatever records are there. So the entire chart can be obtained last three months, six months, eight, nine, nine, nine months, one year. And they can actually sh uh, share it with the clinician in a PDF file. They can just mail it to the doctor. The PDF comes out. So, um, and also, there's extensive education within the app. I mean, obviously, the whole idea is to is to give them as much of information as possible. This is to do with the career. This is to do with day-to-day -day lifestyle management, diet, precautions, everything. So we've done extensive research, and obviously, every information is medically correct, medically validated, because anybody can pull any information using chat GPT, put forth some information, and make available to the patient. But no, this information has been validated with the sickle cell clinicians and written by the doctors. Uh, uh, vetted by the vetted uh, uh, vetted by doctors, written by doctors. So it's a medically hundred percent medically correct information, which is most important. So this is what the app does. And again, for as I told you, even in Africa there are similar issues. Uh, so even in Africa, and also one more thing. Sorry, I mean I'm digressing. <clears throat> India, we found one more issue. Uh, a lot of people have one smartphone to be shared within the entire family, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody has a, has a smartphone. Not every family member has a has a smartphone, because mm -hmm. a sickle cell a patient. Most of the patients actually eighty ninety percent of the patients actually hail from low socioeconomic strata. Mm -hmm. So there is only one smartphone to be shared within the whole family. Wow. So with women, we 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 find this issue. Women when they are told to download the app, is the man is, is the male member actually the husband or father who is actually using using the phone. So they actually don't get too much of information to access the app. I mean, these are the, the issues we can't do much about. Mm -hmm. But obviously, having said that, we have SMS program and we have voice messaging program. So uh, obviously, this is based on the ages and stages model. So whatever is the age of the patient, whatever is the age of the patient, and whatever is the stage of the, of the patient, of the disease. We've created customized SMS messages and voice messages. For example, uh, for parents, we've created a separate set of messages. For youth, adolescents, there's a separate set of messages. For women... For for a, for a for a female uh, teenager, there's a separate message. Uh, for pregnancy, we have separate messages. So I mean, we've created extensive set of bank of messages for sickle cell disease management. So this is what the entire 360 degree digital health program is all about. Okay, yeah. So one thing that I wanted to mention about that you said was, you know, you talked a lot about because it seems like essentially what this app does is it's an app that's created to help document and track the experience of people with sickle cell so that they can better manage their disease, uh, which sounds very interesting. And I can definitely see providing a lot of value. Um, one instance that you said that, um, cause I have a similar experience is when my story with hydroxyurea, I actually took in hydroxyurea. And uh, one thing I've noticed in with a lot of people in the sickle cell community is they say hydroxyurea isn't working for them, but it's like, is it not working or is it that you're not taking it consistently? You know what I'm saying? I understand that everybody's body reacts differently to different things, but I also know that um, a lot of patients aren't adherent 
to the medications they're taken or adherent to some of the lifestyle behaviors that they're supposed to be taking in order to optimize their sickle cell disease. So I'm really glad that you're creating an app like this to help people become a lot more compliant and consistent with their behavior. I, I think it's very important. One thing I wanted you to talk to more about and see is um, because I'm all about providing value to uh, my audience and just providing value to people in general. How can somebody, first of all, two questions, has this app actually launched yet? And if two, how can somebody today go on the app, use it and actually get value from it? Right. So we launched the app in uh, quarter two in 2022. So app is already available. There are close to 2,000 patients already uh, who have actually downloaded the app. It's a multilingual app. So it's available in English, Hindi. Um, Hindi is obviously the main language in India. Then there are regional languages in India, which is Odia, Gujarati, Marathi. These are the states where, where uh, sickle cell disease is endemic. So we have in Hindi, which is the national language of India, then we have three other regional, regional languages. Uh, the app is available in five languages, which is obviously English. English version is there as well. So, uh, so, so it's very much available at the Play Store, uh, Google Play Store. They all they can do is just search for My Sickle Care app, and they can download the app. It's very straightforward, easy to download, easy to install on the app on the on the Android phone. It's just two steps process. Actually, just put in the basic information where you hail from, what is your blood group, what is your sickle cell type, etc. Just type in basic information, and then there, there you are. And then for international patients, there is. Uh, OTP verification through email, a simple verification, and that's how it is. So okay. Anybody can access worldwide. Okay, so you said my sickle care, my sickle cell care, my sickle, my sickle care, my sickle care app. And yeah. I one thing I heard is that you said it's an Android thing. Yeah. yeah. Not, it, unfortunately, you don't have the platform from iPhone because I know a lot of Americans um, were were iPhone users, including me. So. Is there a platform for people for, with the iPhone who can use it? So we are actually planning to to make an make an iOS version of, of the uh, of the app. So I'm I'm speaking to my developers as to how fast they can do it. Uh, you know how, how easy would it would it be for them to actually develop the the iOS version? Obviously, there's been plenty of demand actually coming from Africa. I mean, there are a lot of patients actually saying, uh, "Why aren't you launching the the iOS version?" And which is actually surprising for me <laughs> because. Obviously, most of the patients are uh, are Android phone users, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of patients are actually messaging me and saying, you know, when are you launching the the iOS version? So obviously, it's yeah. a, it's a big revelation for me. And yeah, obviously, we are working towards it. Yeah, hence I'm I'm part of the the demand too. I'm like I, I want to see it on the iPhone yes. too, you know. And I think a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching are probably right. thinking the same. So hopefully, that's a sign for you to actually you know, get working on that. And um, I'm sure you see a lot of people interested through um, that place and you hopefully will increase your user account and more people will join in the platform. You know, one thing I also wanted to ask you about, uh, Dr. Katira, is because um, I'm always curious to learn about this, but you know, you, you don't have sickle cell disease, uh, yet you are very passionate clearly about advocating for people with sickle cell disease. Uh, yeah. Where does that passion come from? Why are you so intentional about helping people with sickle cell. Why did you take it on upon yourself to create this app? Why are you taking it upon yourself to provide education for people with sickle cell? Right. So I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, so the community which I belong to um, in India, uh, there are a lot of sickle cell patients actually in that community. And the state where my roots are from, because I live in Singapore, um, uh, I've been living in Singapore for the past 18 years, 18, 19 years. Uh, but obviously my roots belong to India. So that's where I was born and brought up. So the state which I belong to, which is called Chhattisgarh, has a very high, um, high prevalence, uh, prevalence rate of, uh, of sickle cell. So the trade, trade, uh, trade rate is very, very high. The sickle cell patients are, numbers are very high. So obviously I saw plenty of uh, sickle cell sufferers around me. And also I must give credit to the uh, the then uh, director uh, director general of Sickle Cell Institute because you know, what government of Chhattisgarh has done is they've created a dedicated Sickle Cell Institute in Raipur, which is the capital of that state. Uh, so the director general then uh, uh, actually we were having a discussion where he had called me to give a talk actually, and he said why don't you start a, a digital health program? I was talking about digital health a lot. I was giving a talk on digital health um, way back in seventeen. 
So he said, why don't you actually focus on di- look at digital health uh, in, in for dedicated towards sickle cell because nobody's talking about it. So that was my trigger point. And I saw obviously a big and met need. And then my interest grew. I said, okay, I ma- made up my mind. I read up as well. Personally, I did plenty of research. And I said, okay, Bhabha, this is a big unmet need and I should be the one actually uh, try, uh, trying to do something about it. And that's yeah. how the, the uh, you know, the flow started and then it became a big stream and then there we are. Yeah, and it's, it's like the entrepreneur in you when you see a problem, you want to solve it and, and see what you can do to actually help people. Which I really appreciate. Uh, I, I, you know, I have a similar story. I, of course, mine is a little different because I actually have sickle cell disease. But um, one of the things that inspired me to start creating content on YouTube is like, you know, I think you and I were both doctors and we're big fans of information and learning and gaining as much information. Unfortunately, right. one of the problems with sickle cell is when you start to actually research information, the information is very limited. And it's unfortunate because I'm, I ha- I, some, I'm just a curious person. I have so much questions about the disease that I'm living with. So I'm like, I'm going on YouTube. Hey, wh- wh- how, what is this question or what is that question? And I can't find the answer I'm searching for. And I'm a doctor and, and I'm still like learning, trying to figure out some of this information so that I'm, con- I'm looking at myself like, man, if I'm having such a hard time finding out clinical information about sickle cell disease, imagine who all the other people who are even doctors or have the medical background who are having a hard time learning about sickle cell disease and what they can do to optimize themselves and help optimize their health. So I started um, this YouTube to have more people learn about sickle cell, just like you're trying to do it for the people in India. So I think it's kind of cool. We have a common goal of educating people and providing inspiration to people so we can ultimately uplift people with sickle cell. And, you know, I think we're doing it in two different regions, but that nevertheless, we have similar goals. And it's very interesting to hear how, um, about sickle cell disease and the state of sickle cell in India. I'm really glad that you're 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 sharing sharing that story, and um, I think it's very I think it's going to be very interesting for a lot of the people here in America. And then I know there's people in India watching this, and they're like, "Wow, man! Like, you know, he's connecting with a doctor from India, and let them know that uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all, and I thank y'all for watching, and um, you know, and hopefully people like Dr. Katera will continue to provide more education." Uh, for for people like y'all and maybe who knows maybe you can actually reach out to him one day so um but that being said you know if people want to learn more about you dr kateria and or more about the app or just you know is there anything to promote what 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 are some social media accounts people can reach you up reach out to you on well i mean we have a twitter handle obviously twitter handle has a has a link on it uh we have instagram handle uh, what we also do is within the app and at, at, the, at the social media handles what we we do is we try and highlight people like you, the sickle cell achievers, because obviously the community is looking for inspiration. Yes. Uh, what I found within the community was a sense of dejection, sense of withdrawal, uh, sense of anxiety, stress, because mental health is a big problem with the sickle cell patients. So what I I took it upon myself that you know look I'll highlight these sickle cell achievers. So if you look at our Instagram handle, we've highlighted some of the sickle cell patients who've actually become doctors. Hmm. Uh, in fact. In fact, there's this one sickle cell uh, trait patient um, who's been highlighted uh, at, at our Instagram page. Uh, he's now training to be a pediatrician. So, uh, and obviously he's he's gone through a lot of pain during his med school days. Uh, yes. He, he's controlled it very well. So, uh, we tend to highlight these. And again, this is not, not uh, just restricted to India. We are actually highlighting the patients from Africa. I'm in touch with so many sickle cell leaders from uh, different parts of Africa, from Tanzania, from Uganda, from Kenya. Um, a US, a UK. So I'm in touch, personally in touch with a lot of sickle cell leaders and I, I get new perspective and I talk to each of you. So obviously that helps me find you in the program accordingly. Um, so obviously uh, our goal is to make the program as wide as possible and make it available uh, to more and more patients. We would love to actually uh, take the SMS and voice message program also to, to different parts of Africa. Because obviously, not everybody has a smartphone, right? In Africa as well. If you look at the Uganda, Tanzania, I've been tried, uh, uh, Nigeria. A lot of patients have just basic phone. So basic phone can also be very, very useful for essential information dissemination, education, and lifestyle modification. And it definitely helps. There is, there is published evidence as well. 
there is published evidence in different disease areas that just simple sms based information base uh, information i mean it has to be consistent consistent information it has actually resulted in in significant uh, uh, you know perceptible differences actually so it has made made significant difference within patients just yeah. sms based information service wow yeah so, I, I i mean that's what i'm 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 super aware of the power of information and you don't know it can be one little graphs of information that can just completely change your life just like learning about uh hydroxyurea completely changed my life or learning about the stress b comp complex medication completely changed my life or just learning all these different tips and tricks that i'm trying to share with people too so i definitely that doesn't amaze me at all that information helps imp improve people's health and the, the, now the question is, how are we going to actually promote that information and get it out to as much people as possible, which you and I are on the same path towards doing. Uh, and I, I, you know, and I'm, I also want to commend you for bringing awareness to more sickle cell achievers. I like how you said it, sickle cell achievers. Um, I think one thing about sickle cell, and I know if you're going through sickle cell, it's probably very hard to find other people who are actually doing well, you know, because you might not be in the best state of mind. So, you know, that's one of the another reason why I created it. I wanted to show people that there's a lot of people out there with sickle cell disease who are healthy, who are scientists, who are athletes. I don't know. This this guy I'm trying to get on named Billy Garrett, first NBA player yeah. to ever make it with sickle cell disease. Um, yeah. You know, like you said, there's world leaders with sickle cell disease. Uh, right. You know, the president of Howard University, uh, I'm not sure if he's still the president, but he has sickle cell disease. That, that, that's a college in America. And I'm trying to get in contact with a lot of these people to provide farther evidence that just because you have sickle cell doesn't necessarily mean that you can't uh, be successful and you can't achieve. So I'm glad that you're doing that for us and um, spreading awareness and promoting sickle cell disease through the people who are doing great work oh, absolutely i mean you're doing fabulous i mean i've seen your youtube videos i've also seen your workout videos uh i mean you're you're doing a a good amount of significant hard work obviously when i'm going to going to do it to that post obviously i'll put that in bracket do not attempt <laughs> because you know i mean not every sickle cell <laughs> should be, should be getting, you know, yeah. in, uh, should, should, should be getting into exuberant mode of of exercise and then you know hit the gym and you know get into crisis so yeah when we're when we are doing that post when you're putting it out on social media i'll put that do not attempt you know? <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Saying, you know, your 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 post is under development uh but having said that i mean jokes apart you have to do lots actually there's lots to be done i mean simple example i mean i'll, I'll throw a small statistics for example uh a birth rate in in the u.s for sickle cell is um one within african-americans one uh, per 365 birth so that's african american there's one sickle cell patient for one for 365 birth in america whereas for cystic fibrosis it's one per 2500 birth in caucasian patients right so look look at the difference but if you look at the federal spending right yeah it did fund a spending between 2000 so there's a jama publication actually i'm referring mm -hmm. to the jama publication if you want i can i could, I could email that to you as well yeah please do so, so for, between 2008 and 18, okay, the federal funding which went to cystic fibrosis was $2,807 per patient. For sickle cell disease patient, it was $812. So yeah. you can look, you you can look, and the number of sick, uh, cystic fibrosis patients is is far lower as compared to sickle cell patients disease. Uh, patient, yeah. patient was in 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 the U.S. Yeah. Oh, so, and. Yeah, and, and, and I'm glad you brought up that statistic. It's very sad and it's very unfortunate. And I'm very um, privy to the underfunding of sickle cell disease and the difference in it. Um, and if I had to speak towards that, I'm pretty sure that one of the things that um, is a major underlying aspect towards that is simply um, race issues and a correlation of just class issues and socioeconomic issues. You know, um, I know cystic fibrosis is a disease that affects a lot of white Americans. And so because of that, they're a lot more likely to get the funding that they need or get the attention that they need to actually help with their issue. And it's very sad because despite sickle cell disease being a lot more prevalent, you know, we're not getting the attention that we, we deserve or the funding that we deserve. You know, um, fortunately, um, it, it seems like throughout 2023 and 2024, um, 
awareness has become be slowly becoming more prevalent. You know, I'm seeing more people talk about it like you. I'm talking more about it. Um, my channel is growing. So it seems okay. to be a lot more evidence that people are looking for information with sickle cell disease. And that really brings me um, a lot of, you know, joy and happiness to know that the demand for it is slowly but surely increasing, you know? Oh, absolutely. So one one suggestion I'll give you, since you're getting yes. a lot of audience from India, perhaps you can actually enable the, the Hindi subtitle because a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of patients in India actually are English challenged, okay. particularly cell patients. So if you can enable the, the sure. Hindi subtitles on the screen, uh -huh. that would actually come handy for the patients. Okay, I'm 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 noting that down right now. That's interesting. I I didn't know that, but you know, however I can help people, I'm always I'm always down to do that. Enable the yes. Hindi subtitles. Is that the yeah. primary language in in Yeah, so that's the primary language, and that is the so that is the version we've seen significant amount of uh, of downloads for when it when it comes to comes to comes to India. Obviously, outside of India, it's been English, which has been downloaded the most. But in India, despite the other three la three languages available, we've seen the Hindi downloads the most. Oh, okay, that's that's so, very interesting. So, so that's how people actually communicate, and then we we made available all the information in uh, these languages. And obviously, we hope to build further and make an an iOS version as well very soon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man, uh, Dr. Kateri, I, I, you know, it was a great pleasure having you on. Um, I learned so much about the, the state of, of sickle cell in, in India and just what other entrepreneurs like you are doing to contribute to the cause. You know, when I hear people like you really walking the walk and doing all this effort to better the sickle cell community, it's very um, inspiring and I'm very grateful for it. Honestly, it, it, it kind of gives me more hope that you know, there seems to be a trend out there that, you know, there's more people who are starting to care. And it's not just people who have sickle cell, it's other people outside of sickle cell making a strong effort to better the community and, and, and warriors and around the world. So thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, thanks for having me, actually. And you, I mean, I must say, I mean, you are doing fabulous job. I mean, fabulous job in, in patient advocacy, raising the voice, making the voice actually global. Your 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 mm -hmm. voice is now heard all over all over the world. People from Africa, people from the US, people from India, for example, are, are also Middle East probably are, are consuming yes. your content and obviously getting enlightened and obviously getting motivated to do more. So Thank you. Uh, so so I reckon I mean just just keep doing the good work, obviously. And uh, I mean I'm my best wishes. I want your channel to grow many mm -hmm. fold. And I hope you get more and more followers and obviously get more and more people uh, people um, under that community. Thank you so much, Dr. Katera. You have a great day and we'll stay in touch. Thank you so much. You take care. Have a nice day. Cheers.